Hi, Devin from Decon here, and I have a bit of a confession. I've been on the Android side of things for the past nine years, and it was originally the HTC M7 that enticed me with its amazing build quality, and I've been hooked ever since. Over the past two and a half years, I've been using an LG V30 Plus because it was the best at what I needed a smartphone to do, and I just never really felt compelled to get a new smartphone. That was until the battery started going bad, and it just wouldn't last half of my workday. So began my search, and after looking at nearly a half a dozen smartphones from different manufacturers, I began to notice an unnerving trend. Smartphones are f***ing expensive. For me, I use a smartphone as sparingly as possible. It's essentially what I use for listening to music on the go. It's a social media monster, a recipe machine, and it's also what I use for uh, adult stuff. And that's really kind of it. Sure, I text and make phone calls, but that's what any phone is for, and in terms of utilizing a smartphone to its full potential, I just don't do that as it essentially sits on my desk when I come home and I rely on other devices to take care of whatever itch I have at that point in time. And I just don't want it becoming a distraction around my family. When I was looking for my new phone, I wanted a fairly premium phone that was powerful enough to do what I needed it to do, and I also wanted a, an above average camera for those rare instances I wanted to insist something on the go. But above all, I just didn't want a phone that would destroy my bank account. So why did I return to an iPhone after nearly 9 years? Well honestly because it was the best option for me at this point in time and as insane as it is to say this, it was the most affordable. The iPhone SE's design is a bit archaic, I mean look at those bezels, they're hideous, but the overall build quality is excellent as it's constructed from aluminum. And the back of the phone is glass which allows for wireless charging. We have the same 4.7 inch screen here with a resolution of 1334 by 750 And the display itself is an LED display, not an OLED display. And it's not that it looks bad, in fact it looks pretty great in a vacuum. But when you set it side by side to an OLED display, you begin seeing the OLED advantage. So externally things haven't changed, but internally is where the iPhone SE really shines. Apple implemented the latest A13 processor into this phone and it shows. It's very fluid and it just doesn't skip a beat. Whatever you do on this phone it is going to fly, and gaming is a breeze too as it can handle even the most demanding games with ease. The rear camera is essentially the same one used on the iPhone 11 Pro as well. Now this is an oversimplification but let me explain a bit further. The iPhone SE is using the same 12 megapixel wide angle camera as the iPhone 11 Pro and it has an aperture of 1.8 and it's capable of recording 4K footage up to 60 frames per second, and 1080p footage up to 240 frames per second. But unlike the Pro, this is a single lens camera system, and despite that, it produces some fantastic photos. Daytime shots are especially nice here, colors really come alive, and contrast overall is excellent. Nothing appears to be oversaturated, and overall it just produces a really good looking image. Low light shots aren't great as it struggles to resolve the image, and there is some grain introduced. The front facing camera is a 7 megapixel camera and while it doesn't produce the best selfies, it does a pretty good job and portrait mode is included as well which is always a plus. Battery life on the iPhone SE is stellar, I was able to get through two full work days with regular use and I still had a small percentage left over. Even if you're a heavy user, I think you should have no problem getting through your entire work day. And one last thing I wanted to mention is the home button. It's back and it's as awesome as ever. I personally prefer Touch ID to Face ID as it's effortless and a more efficient process. And I actually prefer it when switching between applications rather than using gesture controls. The home button is utilizing Force Touch and I love it. This is my first Force Touch experience on the iPhone and it's probably the most satisfying thing ever. I honestly can push this button all day long. There's not really anything I hate about this phone, but if I had a nitpick, I really don't love that USB Type-C is still absent. The lightning port just charges so slowly and it just needs to be changed by now. Overall, the iPhone SE is Apple being its best self, providing an affordable option for people like me who can't necessarily afford a flagship phone, 
but still wants a phone with a flagship feel in terms of build quality and overall fluidity, is the best example of Apple thinking different. Sure, they've had their missteps in the past with affordable phones, but they have something great with the SE line, and I hope they continue to make them because they are truly special. At just $399, the iPhone SE should be the benchmark for affordable phones, and it should be on your short list of smartphones to buy this year, regardless of price. Well, that's been nice. If you enjoyed this video, send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. I'll see you next time.